Thank you for joining Money Simplified, your guide to money and mutual funds, presented by Franklin Templeton Mutual Fund. We appreciate your participation. At Personal FN, we are committed to help investors achieve their financial goals and objectives. Our core proposition is built around unbiased research and financial planning. We wish to thank Franklin Templeton Mutual Fund for partnering with us in this investor education and awareness initiative. Welcome to session 16 of Money Simplified, your guide to money and mutual funds. We are glad to have you with us for our 16th session on analyzing risk return and performance of mutual funds. Alright, so now let's get started with our learning session today and let us understand the various parameters that can help you analyze risk and evaluate the performance of mutual funds. Evaluating risk return is primary step towards investing in mutual funds. You see, as other investment avenues carry risk, even mutual funds carry risk while they endeavor to create wealth for you as investors in the long run. Hence, you should choose mutual funds based on the risk tolerance level and return expectations. In today's session, we will tell you how you can balance your risk and return with appropriate tools and data available while you invest in mutual funds. Also, while identifying and finalizing the right mutual funds for your portfolio, you should make sure that they match your risk tolerance and return expectation. So what are some of the major risks associated with mutual funds? First, market risk. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk as underlying investments where mutual fund invests such as stocks and bonds show uncertain movement. Do not forget, the prices of these underlying instruments are driven by market sentiments and over a time period, it may lead to volatility in performance of funds. Then there is industry risk. Any negative news development in a particular industry may lead to a fall in stock prices for that particular industry and therefore may impact the valuation of funds with a concentration towards such an industry. Likewise country risk. Country specific risk may have an impact on financial markets. This can be due to economic factors such as inflationary pressures, sovereign risk that is default by government, etc. or even political events such as general elections, administrative functioning, policy decisions or even natural disasters such as earthquake, flood, etc. All these may have a high impact on the performance of funds focusing towards any such country. Then comes currency risk. Any swift upside or downside movement in currency may impact one's investment in offshore instruments. An Indian investor investing in a US focus fund may earn high return in a scenario where the Indian rupee suffers a huge depreciation against the US dollar and vice versa. Interest rate risk. Interest rates and bond prices are inversely related. Any upset movement in interest rates may lead to downset movement in bond prices and thus impact its portfolio valuation, especially debt portfolio and debt mutual funds. However, the impact of this risk may fade over time. Then there is credit risk or default risk arises when a bond issue fails to meet his obligation of timely interest payment or principal repayment. Then there is principal risk as well. Any near-term volatility or swift fall in prices of underlying instruments may lead to depreciation in fund value to levels even lower than the original investment. This may cause principal risk for investors. Fund manager risk. Fund manager risk can be experienced when the fund manager fails to execute fund's investment strategy or meets his investment objective. Also, a frequent change in fund managers may lead to such a risk. However, process-driven fund houses are well placed to avoid such risk for its investors. So you see, it is imperative for investors to identify mutual funds that can help them to meet their investment objectives at the desired risk level. And mind you, gauging risk in a mutual fund scheme only on the basis of the NAV of the fund reports may not be a holistic assessment. It is noteworthy that in a rising market, it is not altogether difficult to clock higher growth if the fund manager is willing to take higher risk. We have seen this on several occasions in the past, during the tech rally of 99 and early 2000, as well as several mid-cap rallies of the past. So assessing the past returns clocked by the mutual fund in isolation will be inaccurate because they do not give any indication of the level of risk you have been exposed to as an investor. 
So here are the indicators for measuring mutual fund risk. Standard deviation. Standard deviation is the measure of risk taken by or volatility borne by the mutual fund. Mathematically speaking, standard deviation tells you how much the value has deviated from the mean or the average of the values. Standard deviation measures by how much the investor could divert from the average return either upwards or downwards. It highlights the element of risk associated with the fund and is calculated by using historical NAVs of the scheme. Higher the standard deviation indicates that the scheme carries high risk for investors. So if two schemes have generated identical returns, then you should choose the scheme with low standard deviation as it has managed to deliver returns at relatively low risk. Then comes beta. Beta is a measure of volatility of the scheme in comparison to market indices. Beta shows the extent to which the returns of the scheme is impacted by the market factors. See a scheme's beta is 1 vis-a-vis -vis the benchmark index like the CNX Nifty. It will indicate that the scheme's risk is in line with the Nifty index and will move in tandem with the index. A beta of less than 1 will indicate that the scheme is less volatile than the benchmark index while a beta of more than 1 will indicate that the scheme is more volatile than the benchmark index. Then comes R squared. It measures the correlation between the scheme's beta and its benchmark index and ranges between 0 and 1. While 0 represents no correlation, 1 represents full correlation. A fund with low R squared means the fund will not give returns similar to its benchmark index while R squared of an index Replicating a particular index would be around 1 and may give returns in line with the benchmark index. Then there is duration. It measures a bond's sensitivity to change in interest rates. In simple terms, duration shows the change in value of fixed income instruments that will result from a 1% change in interest rate. Longer the duration of a bond, higher the sensitivity and vice versa. The sensitivity of debt mutual fund schemes to interest rate changes can be determined from average duration. It can help you measure the level of interest rate risk you are exposed to by holding the fund. If you have a low risk appetite, debt funds with higher duration may not be suitable for you. You see, below the historical returns of a mutual fund scheme, it is usually stated that past performance may or may not be sustained in the future and should not be used as a basis for comparison with other investments. This disclaimer is explicitly stated whenever fund houses mention the past performance of a scheme. A reason why past performance is not entirely representative of a mutual fund's good showing is because it does not take into consideration the performance of its peers. It is possible that a fund has performed reasonably well across relevant parameters by itself but hasn't quite made the mark when compared to its peers. So let us now take a look at the parameters that may help you compare the returns and performance of a mutual fund scheme with its comparable peer group and help you assess whether or not you should invest in it. Calculating mutual fund returns. The first is absolute returns these are also known as the simple returns. That is the returns that an asset achieves from the day of its purchase to the day of its sale, regardless of how much time has elapsed in between. This measure looks at the appreciation or depreciation that an asset, usually a stock or a mutual fund, achieves over a given period of time. Mathematically, it is calculated as end value minus initial value divided by the initial value into 100. General returns for a period of less than one year are expressed in an absolute form. Then comes annualized returns. Annualized returns show the average annual return on investments over a period of time. It means if you earn an absolute return of 100% over a period of five years, then your annual return would be 20%, that is 100 divided by 5. Annualized returns may not exactly indicate the annual growth you get on your investments, and hence you should consider what is known as compounded annual growth rate. CAGR can show you the year-on-year -year growth rate of your investments over a period of time. 
it can give you a better idea about the past performance of any investment. While selecting a mutual fund scheme, one should look for and compare the scheme based on the long term performance. The long term growth of a mutual fund scheme vis a vis its peers over a longer time period of say 3 years or 5 years should be calculated in terms of CAGR. Mathematically, it is calculated as given here. For calculating CAGR, you need to consider the fund's end value, your initial investment value and the number of years of your holding. Then dividend payout and distribution of bonus. Not the least, while considering the return of a mutual fund scheme over a particular time frame, you should also account for dividends and bonus that you have been distributed by the scheme in that time period. This point is relevant for investors looking to invest in a dividend option of the scheme as here it is imperative to calculate dividend adjusted returns and or bonus adjusted returns. Calculation of returns. The table shows that the return calculation on an investment amount of rupees 1 lakh over a period of 5 years. We can see that absolute returns keep on increasing with an increase in value and even if the annualized returns for all the 5 years are the same that is 10%, the CAGR reduces gradually. So different methods of returns calculation can project different returns. Before falling in for any investment option showing you high returns, you need to check whether the returns are calculated in absolute terms or annualized or CAGR. You should always compare returns by applying the same method of calculation. Making an investment decisions by considering only historical returns and dividends in a mutual fund scheme can be risky. As we mentioned earlier, as an investor you need to also evaluate the risk involved in a mutual fund scheme before investing. But evaluating the investment option on any one of the two that is risk or return on a standalone basis will not be the prudent assessment. Hence, before making an investment, the mutual fund scheme must be evaluated based on risk return criterion. Indicators for measuring mutual funds performance based on risk return parameters. The first one is Sharpe Ratio, a measure developed to calculate risk adjusted returns. Sharpe Ratio measures how much return you can expect over and above certain risk free rate. For example, the bank deposit rate for every unit of risk that is standard deviation of the scheme. Statistically, the Sharpe Ratio is the difference between the annualized return and the risk free return divided by the standard deviation during a specified period of time. Higher the magnitude of the Sharpe Ratio, higher would be the performance rating of the scheme. So if two schemes have delivered similar returns, you should choose the one with the higher Sharpe Ratio as it has shown its ability to deliver better risk adjusted returns. Then comes Trenner Ratio. It measures the risk adjusted returns based on the systematic risk. It is similar to Sharpe Ratio with the difference being that the Trenner Ratio uses beta as the measurement of volatility while Sharpe Ratio uses standard deviation. Trenner is calculated as portfolio return minus risk free return divided by the beta of the portfolio. A scheme with higher Trenner Ratio should be preferred as it indicates that the scheme has excess return per unit of systematic risk or beta. Then comes Jensen's Alpha. It represents the difference between the actual returns of the scheme vis-a-vis -vis the expected returns of the scheme over a period of time. A positive alpha means the fund manager has managed to generate returns in addition to the benchmark index. While a negative alpha means the fund manager has generated returns lower than its benchmark. So we can also say alpha indicates the ability of the fund manager to generate additional returns for investors. Before we end our learning session today, here are some key takeaway points. As mutual funds carry risk, you should choose mutual funds based on your risk tolerance level and return expectations. Interest rates and bond prices are inversely related. Any upset movement in interest rates may lead to downside movement in bond prices and vice versa. Process driven fund houses are well placed to avoid fund manager risk for their investors. Standard deviation measures the risk taken by the mutual fund scheme 
while beta shows the extent to which the returns of the scheme is impacted by the market factors. Longer the duration, higher will be the sensitivity of the bond. Do not forget that the compounded annual growth rate CAGR is a better method to calculate long-term growth of a mutual fund scheme. You should always compare returns by applying the same method of calculation. Sharp ratio is an important ratio to measure the risk-adjusted returns of a mutual fund scheme, while Trenner ratio measures the risk-adjusted returns based on systematic risk. So a scheme with a higher Sharpe ratio or a higher Trenner ratio should be preferred for investment. And last but not the least, Alpha indicates the ability of the fund manager to generate additional returns for its investors. So to end our learning exercise today, we now invite you to test your learning by taking up this simple quiz and win exciting prizes. Thank you for participating. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.